What's up guys, welcome to a new YouTube video. This one's gonna be a bit different. This is gonna be more of a, uh, you know, in the trenches, bit of a vulnerable share from my end here. And uh, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me share a bit about this, you know, we'll call it an inner healing journey I've been going through over the last few months. And I just had a pretty big moment in that journey today, as in 10 minutes ago, which is I had the first full cry that I've had in my adult life. And <clears throat> this is pretty significant for me because, uh, I, well, I know I've suppressed emotion my entire life um, ever since I was like very, very little. I don't know when it started, but I can never really remember not doing it. Um, and so I, I know that just as a brief backstory for you guys, um, like the, I'll give you guys like the two to four minute version of this. Um, I, I started suppressing emotion when I was very young and I arrived as an adult version of myself with a lot of internal um, suppressed emotion, um, definitely some childhood trauma and there hasn't really been any trauma with a capital T, right? We, a lot of people in the space differentiate between like people hear trauma and they assume it's like, uh, you know, rape or getting stabbed or, you know, having your parents killed or something like this. And this is what people in the industry or whatever call capital, uh, trauma with a capital T. None of that stuff happened to me. Um, but with trauma and childhood trauma, trauma with a capital T doesn't have to happen for you to have like very, very deep wounds by the time you're an adult. And all of us have different variants of this. I think it's probably impossible to end up as an adult version of yourself without some form of childhood trauma or like deep kind of, I don't know, something there, right? Anyways, in my case, there, there's certainly um, a lot of that and uh, as I continued to age through middle school and high school and and pretty much up until like a couple of years ago, I just continued to just suppress, suppress, suppress to avoid getting hurt. And again, this, this led me to an adult version of the Zach, a 24, 25 now version of Zach, who just has like a ton of internal suppressed emotion just stuck beneath the surface. And I've felt this emotional entity um, kind of in my in my stomach, in my gut for, for a few years now. Um, it, it kind of felt like a dull, a dull kind of a, like pit per se, where it would get ignited to a certain extent through certain things like certain stressors in business or certain, you know, things in my personal life would happen and it would get ignited a little bit throughout the last few years. And I started to do a bit of work around it and around my kind of suppressed emotion situation, we'll call it. And so in 2021, I attended a men's retreat that my brother Brett hosted. You guys should check out my brother, by the way. Shout out to him. He's been imperative in my healing journey. It's been really, really helpful to have him in my corner. But he facilitated this men's retreat where part of which was this part where we did the breath work and a lot of the guys started to uh, cry and, and stuff like this. Because when you do breath for that long, I forget how long it was, like a 60, 90 minute breath work, you, emotion tends to come up and you tend to express things that you haven't uh, expressed for, for a while now. And that time, that was 2021, I believe. Or no, was that last year? I think my mistake, I think that was actually 2022. Yeah, that was 2022, my bad. Um, so that was just last year. And uh, so that was my first and cry as, as an adult version of myself, right? Which is good. It was a step in the right direction. I was happy about it. <laughs> I felt, you know, we're, we're making progress forward. And then nothing really happened so much after that. Um, but then this year, this summer, like, to an, an extent I couldn't even verbally explain to you guys, my inner shit was fully activated, fully exposed, fully triggered. 
And I don't know how much inner shit I have, but it feels like a whole lot of it <laughs> was, was just completely flushed to the surface. Um, and it was, it, it was, and then, so for a few months I was just living in internal hell because I was blind. I didn't know what was actually going on in my body. All I knew was I was experiencing like copious amounts of pain. And there'd be times where I, I would just feel like the most like gut wrenching emotions all at once. Um, if I had to put names to it, it would be some kind of combination of, you know, loneliness and anxiety and depression, um, overwhelm just to name a few, I guess, but it was just, it was just really tough. And so, but you know, after, after like a couple months of this, um, I finally started to gain like a little bit of awareness behind the fact that like, okay, this is actually like, I, I kind of like zoomed out and I was like, okay, like this is definitely like my inner shit. It's just coming out. It just, it's just going through its process finally. Right. And and so I was like, okay, um, might as well just, if, if this is what's happening now, you know, there's, there's no stopping this train. I, I can either, you have to make a decision. There's a, there's a crossroads that you have to come to or that this crossroads was placed in my path. And I had two choices. I can either very aggressively suppress it, which would, is, would almost be impossible because of the intensity of it. If I really wanted to suppress it, I would have to use probably a large amount of drugs or alcohol to do it. And I am obviously not going to do that. And so the only other option is walk through the fire, um, to walk into the fucking lion's den and, and address your shit. And so that's what I did and that's what I'm doing. And it's, you know, when this crossroads get placed in front of you, you have no choice in the matter of when it happens, but you do have a choice of how you, how you pivot yourself and how you address it. And so I'm thankful that I chose to walk through the fire and that I'm still walking through the fire. And it's been fucking like four months, three, three months of just eating shit. But you know, when 20, 20, three, 24 years of suppressed emotion finally comes to the surface and childhood wounds and like internal shit comes to the surface. Yeah, it's going to be painful. It's going to be a, a drawn out kind of healing process. So anyways, um, back to what I was saying for the first couple months, I didn't really know what was going on. All I knew was pain. And it was obviously very difficult to execute in my business going through that I kind of just did the bare minimums um, you know, just posting content, um, uh, you know, showing up to my team calls, showing up to my client calls. And that's about it. Um, I mean, yeah, if you guys look at my Instagram, any post between like, <laughs> between like May to August, I was eating shit, but you can't really tell because again, I, I can suppress emotion. So for Instagram posts, I can, <laughs> hold myself together for long enough to make a post. Um, but anyways, like probably midway through June, last portion of June, um, I started to really get uh, very intentional and I started to gain a bit more clarity and um, learning about this stuff helped. Um, having a person like my brother in my corner helped. He was able to provide me a lot of context behind what I was actually experiencing and kind of what to, what to, how to think about it and how to approach it, which is really good. Um, and I've been doing lots and lots and lots and lots of like meditation and journaling and trying to get clarity and express to myself. Um, and it's been good. And I've had a few people in my corner as well, uh, like friends that I can text that I could just like express to as well. That's just been really good. Um, yeah. And so anyways, so I cried that one time last year. And then since I started getting really intentional about this particular chapter of my journey, where all of my inner shit just started to hit the fan. Um, <clears throat> I, I've cried a few times. 
um, over the last month, month and a half. But I they kind of I kind of like had to force it out because for me, I know crying is very, very like needed, and for a lot of people, for me, I know I need to. I know I need to let shit out, and so <clears throat> um, I've been trying. And a couple times I was able to, you know, cry for like a minute or two and just really try to force it. But today was the first big, 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 big cry that I can remember in 10, 15 years. Um, big, big cry, right? Where I was very vocal, very, like I didn't hold back um, intentionally. I, I let out every fucking drop of it that I could, every every uh every ounce of it and this is a really good thing um i know this was a long time coming that i needed to let out a very kind of intense release and uh <clears throat> yeah and so that's that's kind of where i'm at now um i don't have like complete clarity over what exactly are the inner kind of childhood trauma or uh um inner Inner, inner child wounds or suppressed emotion. I'm not exactly sure what the specific instances are that cause that. Um, I know that I have ideas that I can tell you guys, one of which I think I had a, a major, major fear of abandonment. Um, I think my parents' divorce could have contributed to this. Um, maybe some other things as well. I'm not really sure. Um, I think that there's a a deep kind of fear of losing love, which is kind of like the same thing of abandonment. Um, a a deep-seated kind of belief that I'm not worthy of love. Um, I think that these are three, I'm not 100% sure on this. These are just, these are just like, it just feels like this is what is the case. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, because I've been doing a lot of a lot of like kind of work around that. So anyways, yeah. I don't know I don't know kind of where I'm at in this in this journey uh to be honest. Uh I feel like it's kind of hard to know. Like I've been I've been really you know, I've I've been experiencing these this 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 pain for 3 3 4 months, right? And so I'm not sure how much longer I have to go. Um <clears throat> it's getting better and better. Like for, I'll give you guys an example like a month ago like the chapter of the journey a month ago, I was experiencing pain, like just emotional pain that I described to you guys, probably like, you know, 90% of the time, uh, where I'd have a few good hours here, a few good hours here, um, a few good hours there. But most of the time I was just eating shit, right? And now, and let's say, let's call it like the last few weeks, it's kind of been like a 50-50 split, <laughs> where, you know, I experience very intense emotional pain, like 50% of the time, and, and I'm all right, the other 50%. And so on the macro level, it's, it's just, it's getting better. I'm doing every day. I am doing very intentional work around breathing. Um, once I became aware that the inner child has a big uh, part to play in this, I started to do a lot more inner child work as well. Um, there's this thing called reparenting where your inner child <clears throat> through and the childhood traumas, like this would be, you, you, that is your inner child that is still kind of like uh, your inner child has kind of certain unmet emotional needs from from previous like for example if uh just to give you like a very kind of obvious example just to if like if if a kid had his you know parents um you know leave him or her at a very early age they might have like a, a, a lot of unmet emotional needs, right? And so again, nothing like that happened to me to that extent, but again, whatever whatever happened to like the trauma with the lowercase t, a bunch of them probably um, led me to have, you know, my inner child with like a lot of very kind of potent unmet emotional needs. And so now there's, there's this thing called reparenting where your inner child, it still needs those emotional needs met somehow. And if they're, and, and if you're operating in your life as the adult version of yourself, things can trigger 
these unmet needs of your inner child and it can cause you to have major, major uh, emotional reactions. Major, major, it can cause your shit to come up, right? Which is what happened with me. And, and so now I'm doing a lot of work around reparenting myself and kind of developing a secure attachment with myself and, uh, and showing myself love, showing myself compassion and, and ultimately trying to meet the emotional needs of my inner child and also just myself. Um, yep. And, uh, yeah, those are my main intentions. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys, you know, I, I have a, a new standard that I'm holding myself to of, of uploading weekly YouTube videos. And I was like, it's Sunday now. And I was like, shit, how am I going to do this <laughs> going through, uh, going through like this little, uh, ex this thing today. And while I was crying, like, how the fuck am I going to upload a video? <laughs> but then I was like, why don't I just, why don't I just talk about this? Why don't I just film this? Because, uh, you know, I, I think it's, you know, first of all, when I'm on my deathbed, I'm not going to regret being vulnerable. Um, if anything, I would regret not sharing the, like these parts of my journey. I don't think there's any, uh, nobility in only sharing the good and the easy parts of my journey. I think that sharing all the stuff, including this, especially this, honestly, because this is the shit that I know for me is going to lead to like emotional freedom and living a very happy and fulfilled life. And if I were to continue to go through the rest of my life with this shit suppressed, then it would just keep on popping up and keep on dominating me and dominating my behavior and dominating my thought process for the rest of my life. And so despite the fact that, you know, the last few months have been the most painful thing I've ever fucking experienced in my entire life, I'm grateful for it because I know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel that is even brighter than the light that I saw before I entered the tunnel, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of uh, taking it day by day at this point. And I didn't see this big cry coming. Um, it kind of just happened. And while it was happening, while I was crying, I was like, yes, you know, <laughs> it's finally happening. I've been, wa I've been waiting for this shit. <laughs> Cause I, I know it's, I, I know I need it. I know I needed it. And hopefully perhaps there's more where that came from. I, I don't think that I've emptied out the entire tank in regards of like my entire s suppressed emotions and my entire childhood trauma. I don't know. I don't know where I'm at there. I'm sure there's going to be stuff coming up in the future, but uh, I mean, when it does, I'll be a, a version of myself that will actually know how to handle it and know how to process it and let it out. Um, the version of myself three, four months ago, <laughs> he had no idea. He, uh, he experienced large, large amounts of pain and that's all he knew. He didn't know how to, he didn't know what to do with it. He didn't know how to handle it. He didn't know what it was. And it's being very, it's hard being in that place. And this is why I make these videos because most men are in that place. This is why I've decided to be at least relatively public around my healing journey because most men are not aware of this. And most men were taught to suppress emotion. We're taught to, you know, keep it in and, and be tough and just push it down and move on, right? Which is what I was doing my whole life. And and so, yeah, I want to, I, I make this stuff in hopes that maybe it inspires one or two of you to start to address and face what's going on with you. If you have suppressed emotion, if you have certain trauma from the past, if you're dealing with something like it's never going to leave you, it's only going to marinate on the inside and, uh, it's eventually going to come out. It might be a nasty boiling over moment for you, but eventually it's, it's going to come out and, and when it does, or, and you can honestly facilitate that in a much more intentional environment. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here. It's like either your inner shit's going to get triggered and activated and you're going to have like a massive boiling over point and just like act so irrationally, um, potentially affecting other people that are around you, or you can get very intentional about it now and have your releases in a, in a kind of like a intentional context where you're, you're being intentional about your growth. So
yeah, that's what I got for you guys today. Um, yeah, uh, like <laughs> I, uh, I didn't intend making, uh, obviously turning, uh, kind of like you could, my personal brand into like, into making videos about this type of stuff, but it just, it just, the way the cookie crumbled with my own journey and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hide it. I'm not gonna back down from it. You know, I don't give a fuck, you know, what anybody thinks about it. Um, because I, I know that it's already helped people. Um, and I've, I'm grateful that it has, even from the stories I posted on Instagram, I get like uh, a bunch of responses from men who are going through their own shit and kind of resonate with the things I'm saying. And, and I'm glad I can help them. I'm glad if you're one of them, I'm glad I can help you. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it for today. Um, if you guys like, I can make more videos regarding this portion, this little chapter of my journey. I will say that this, this, uh, chapter of my journey has been the most transformational thing that I've ever experienced. Um, in, in this amount of time, like I've grown a lot, a lot over the last few years, but over the last three months, specifically the last one to two months, I, the growth I've had personally is, is unprecedented. And that this is one of the reasons why I'm so grateful for this experience is, you know, these, these painful chapters, they really crack you open. And it's like they, they rip you apart, giving you the opportunity to kind of reconstruct yourself mentally, emotionally, and otherwise. And so again, I'm grateful for it. It's super painful, but necessary chapter in my self development. And, uh, you know, happy to share it with you guys. So can't really think of anything else to say at this point. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it there. If you guys, you know, want to reach out, um, feel free to do so. If you want to comment what anything regarding your own journey, perhaps what you've been going through and what you feel like has helped or I don't know, anything of this nature, I want to normalize as much as I can this type of inner work. So if you feel like you have stuff to share, feel free to do so. Even if it's just in the comment section, um, even if it's stuff you've never shared, you know, you can make the comments section the first place you share it to. This is a safe space. So yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I'll end the video here. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you a lot. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope this was somehow valuable for you or insightful. And please let me know what you think or if you guys have any feedback or, or just any thoughts. So, all right, guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.